Welcome to In the Workshop. This one covers making a chimney and mounting for a Stuart Models 3500 centreflue boiler. The Stuart 3500 series of model boilers are really well made things, but the ones I've seen in the past are spoiled by the way people put chimneys on them, which are usually made out of central heating components. So I decided to do it properly, and this is how I did it. First of all, I bought a piece of phosphor bronze. This is quite a big piece of phosphor bronze, and I'm going to machine most of it away, which is a bit of a waste. If you watch the video all the way to the end, you'll see why I did it this way. I work on model steam boilers quite frequently, and I see some weird and wonderful ways of making chimneys. Normally, the flue of a centiflue boiler sticks out a little way, but it doesn't on a 3500 series. It finishes quite abruptly, with about a quarter of an inch sticking out the front. And the attempts at a chimney for this type of boiler usually range from spurious central heating fittings to a casting with a piece of copper tube stuck in the front, none of which look particularly good in my opinion. So I want to give the illusion that the 3500 series has a full length centreflue like in most centreflue boilers, and that's why I'm making this adapter. And so far I've turned the outside of this piece of phosphor bronze so it's the same diameter as the centreflue, well almost, and then I've recessed the middle bit which pushes into the end of the centreflue, but I have left sufficient material on the outside to take a final finishing cut. I've just finished parting off the piece that I've machined from the main bar stock, and now I've mounted this piece in the chuck and I'm drilling it with a one inch drill. If you look at this side view of the boiler, with my adapter piece pushed into the end of the flue, you'll see what I'm going to be doing. In this clip I've moved over to the Boxford lathe and I've fitted the part in the four jaw chuck. I haven't wasted lots of time showing the setup because quite a few of the videos I've done recently have been showing how to mount things in a four jaw chuck. But suffice to say, it's in the right place. And after using a centre drill, I'm using a 5 8 drill to initially drill a hole through the centre of the work, not all the way through, just through half of it. And now I'm using the 1 inch drill to open up the hole. I need to actually bore a hole in the centre of this to be the same diameter as the external diameter of the chimney, so that the chimney is a snug fit. So I'm trying to use a 1 inch drill, but really this is a bit crude and it's not really what I need. It's going to take far too long anyway just to get a 1 inch hole in there, so instead I'm going to use the boring tool, just because it's quicker. And in no time at all I'm opening up the hole, in a far shorter time than it would have taken me to drill through the piece with a 1 inch drill. I'd like to make it clear that I'm not going all the way through this piece with the boring tool, or the drill for that matter. I only drilled halfway through. And now with the boring bar I'm opening up the hole, so it will fit the copper tube that's going to be the chimney. But I don't want the copper tube to go all the way to the bottom, so I'm stopping the boring process about three quarters of the way down. This will securely locate the chimney without letting it fall into the bottom of the hole. Normally I speed up the video just to save some time, but some viewers have asked me if I can show it in real time, so just for the record, this part is running in real time. And to the viewer who suggested that I put a speed readout on the screen showing what the speed was. I'm really sorry, but I don't have the time to do stuff like that. If you want to know about speeds and feeds, there are many books full of data, full of formulas, full of all manner of things that will tell you what sort of speeds you need for different metals and different diameters. And might I make so bold as to suggest that Google would be a good place to start. My daughter's website www.steamclinic.com is also a good place to look because there are plenty of forums on there and people are starting to add and answer each other's questions which helps me out I cannot answer every question that I get sent every morning I really don't do formulas I am a musician if you want to know about enharmonic changes I can tell you about that but as to being a walking data sheet for everything to do with machining I can't do that at all. Recently I did post a chart listing all the imperial drill sizes and that's proved to be very useful, even I had to look at it. 
I just pick one up that's three down from the size that I want when I want a tapping size for an ME thread, for instance. Because that's the way my brain works. I am a musician, not an engineer, as I keep repeatedly saying to everyone. I'd like to thank the viewer for his efforts when he converted this drill chart to an Excel spreadsheet and sent me a link. But unfortunately, all the comments come through me, and I do not let links through because they can be dangerous. Some links are not quite what they seem. But if you do have some genuine links, and I don't mean adverts for other YouTube channels, what you could do is post them on the www.steamclinic.com forums. That way you would share it with everyone, and I'm sure a lot of people would be grateful to have an Excel spreadsheet of an Imperial drill chart. But as for me, I'm a hopeless case. I just look at the numbers on the front of my drill set and select the drill that I require. This boring bit, I don't mean the bit that is particularly boring because it's going in real time, but this boring operation, should I say, is nearly completed. And now, when I try the piece of copper tubing, which will be the chimney, in place, it fits perfectly. Not too slack and not too tight. Quite a snug fit. I'm not going to silver solder this chimney in place at all. The bottom part, the extension to the flue tube, is going to be painted black, but the chimney needs to be able to be removed for polishing. In this clip I'm turning the flue tube extension, which is a nice piece of phosphor bronze, to the finished size. And by finished size, I don't mean the finished size of the entire component, only the bit that you can see. The piece that's been machined slightly smaller is half an inch long, and this fits inside the flue tube. What I'm concerned with is that the chimney sits exactly in the middle of the exposed part of this machined flue tube extension. I'm machining this part whilst it's held in the three-jaw chuck, but I didn't push the part right into the jaws of the chuck. It's sticking out slightly, so that in a moment, when I turn down the outside diameter, I can get right to the end of the work with the lathe tool, without hitting the chuck jaws. But before I do that, I'm just going to round off the edge here, and I'm being very careful not to remove too much metal. If the cutting tool went through into the large hole in the centre, then the part would be ruined. But thankfully, I have quite a good eye from playing on an etcher sketch for many hours when I was a child. So I've rounded it just as I need it to be, and it looks good to me now. A bit of sanding should do the trick. These marks that you can see were caused by the jaws of the four jaw chuck during the boring operation. But I didn't bother packing the jaws because I knew I was going to do this right at the end. And now I'm taking a very fine finishing cut down the entire length of this machine piece of flue tube and it will fit the boiler perfectly and there will be no marks whatsoever. And now when I temporarily assemble the part it looks good. Far better than a piece of plumbing. There is one minor problem though where the copper tube fits into the turn part there's a bit of a restriction and this is easily dealt with by using a felt tip pen to mark it out and then using a grinder in my trusty DeWalt drill. I really love this drill, it's not one of the cheaper recent ones, it's quite an old one, and it was very expensive when I bought it, and it's rather wonderful. It's done sterling service, I've had it for many years. You can't beat good quality American tools. And while I'm grinding this copper tube, which is not exactly rocket science, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of my Patreon subscribers for the support. And to show my appreciation to all my Patreon subscribers, I've posted a totally free download of my ebook, The Complete Guide to Miniature Steam. And if you want to know more about what's in it, please have a look at my main Steam website. The Complete Guide to Miniature Steam is still for sale on the website, but now it's completely free if you're a Patreon subscriber. The chimney mount is fitted to the flue tube just using a single 6BA bolt. The phosphor bronze chimney mounting that I've just machined is quite a good fit in the flue tube to start with, and all the 6BA bolt does is stops it working loose. In the clip on screen at the moment, I'm machining a ring for the top of the chimney. I'm not going to make a fancy cap on this one, because this one is quite a good looking marine boiler, and generally speaking, they didn't have fancy caps on them. They often just had a ring. Recently, a very good looking boiler was delivered to me from Stuart Models. It belongs to a customer, I'm building a very high quality steam plant for. 
and that just had a ring around the top, quite similar to this one, although a little bit bigger. And so I thought I'd do the same on this. I cleaned up the chimney using some brasso wadding and fitted it in place. And once the bottom part is painted black, I think it's going to look really well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.